All right, Buenos Dias, mis amigos. All right, number six, point number six. All right, so the end is coming any moment now. And what's important to understand is that at the very end, there will be very few people saved. In the days of Noah, there was only eight souls saved so also will there be very few when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and right now could be that moment when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven the key to understanding this first of all you, you got to be saved you got to be born of God and you have to believe the Word of God and then you'll see in Matthew 24 for example that when Jesus is asked about the end of the world the very first thing that he says is take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying that I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many alright so we are in that time when there are very few people saved and if God allowed things to play out the way that they are there would come a point to where there would be nobody saved but for our sake for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened now one thing that uh, yeah I gotta walk you through this alright so one thing that's really important another thing I should say that's really important is knowing that we uh, can know who's not saved. We can't know who is saved, but we can know who is not saved. Matthew chapter 7, Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. The fruits here in Matthew 7 is talking about the deceivers. All right. In verse 15 beware of false prophets false prophets false teachers same thing which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves you shall know them by their fruits you're gonna know who is not saved by the things that they teach all right, and so I want to give a clear example. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. So, okay, just by that standard, we know that anybody that teaches anything else, they are a wolf in sheep's clothing. Of course, what I gather... Uh, is that people don't realize that 99.9% .9 of all the preachers and pastors in the world today in your community teach something other than the end of the world happening when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven they're failing to see it all right what they teach well, they they have all kinds of titles, right? All kinds of uh, pre-millennial, post-millennial, all-millennial, preterist, futurist, this and that. They just forget about all that stuff. What is it that the, that the individual is teaching? Okay. Don't worry about learning what false doctrines are about. Don't waste your time. If you learn all the false doctrines in the world, you'll never spend any time learning the true gospel or the true doctrine of the Bible. And that's really what's important, is the truth. All right, so let's take a look. At, we'll start here at Matthew 24. 
All right, so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, right there in verse 30, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. This is the end of the world. All right, a little confirmation here in Revelation chapter 1. Behold, he comes with clouds and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so. Amen. All right, so this is the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Now, what happens exactly? Well, in Matthew 24, it says, The sun shall be dark and the, shoot, the, I'm sorry, the, sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken that's what's going to happen at the end of the world all right and then so also we got confirmation in second peter chapter 3 that day of the lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up all right so knowing that this world is reserved for fire and that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven know that we will be lifted up they shall gather together his elect the angels of the Lord Jesus Christ will gather together those of us that are alive and those of those of them that have died okay first the dead in Christ then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord so when Jesus comes we are lifted up and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours all the unsaved this is the end of the world all right revelation 20 another example confirming this they the unsaved went up on the breath of the earth and campus the camp of the saints about in the beloved city and that the, the saints are in the air with the lord all right this is beyond obvious but i i want your eyes to see it once you put your eyes on it you have no excuse you have no excuse anyway you should know it you should know it already when jesus comes in the clouds of heaven for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right, so in Revelation 20, the unsaved compass the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. That beloved city is Jerusalem. Okay. It's the city of God which is in heaven. All right. Bear with me. Galatians 4, Jerusalem which is above is free. All right. So the city of God, the beloved city is above. And so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord so Jesus again in, in John 14 so in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also so the new city or the beloved city the new Jerusalem is in heaven so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up. 
and the unsaved are at our feet. All right. So when this happens, fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. Now, if you need one more little proof, in chapter 21, and I saw a new heaven and new earth, for the first heaven and first, first, heaven, first earth passed away and there was no more sea, and I, I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. All right, so in chapter 20, when it says, the unsaved compass the camp of the saints in the beloved city, when we read 21, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the beloved city is in heaven. And it comes down after the unsaved are at our feet and destroyed and killed. Revelation 3 is also another confirmation of this. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. See, we're up in the air. Our enemy is at our feet. And of course, this goes all the way back to Genesis 3. When the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So Jesus is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever. All right, so this is a prophecy that is taught all throughout the Bible all throughout the Bible till I make thine enemies thy footstool uh oh I forgot I forgot give me one second here the Lord said unto my Lord sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool 110 <laughs> way off okay and then of course uh, this is all throughout the Bible let's go Acts 2 till I till I make thy foes thy footstool same thing all right so we're lifted up our enemy is at our feet okay all throughout the Bible this is taught for he must reign till he makes all for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. So we're lifted up, our enemies gathered at our feet, and they are destroyed, killed forever, and then we're putting then we're put back down on the earth. New heavens and a new earth. Alright, so in Matthew twenty four, when the sun is dark and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. This is the transformation of the old world into the new world of everlasting life. Now, compare that with what modern preachers are teaching today. And that is this idea that the unsaved will still have an opportunity to get saved after the Lord Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And that is simply not true. And it is the single most wicked, evil thing that any man could teach in the world today. They cannot wait. If you teach them that and they wait, the blood is on your hands. All right, they simply cannot wait. Of course, let me just show you one more thing. One more thing. Here, let me do it this way. One more thing to support that. When the wrath of God is being poured upon the earth, when we're up in the air, it's important to know. When this is happening, they will not repent. In Revelation 16, verse 9, And men were scourge, scourged, scourged with great heat and blasphemed the name of God which has power over these plagues and they repented not to give him glory 
they're not going to get saved no matter what. All right, one more, one more example. One more example. Let me give you one more one more example. One more example in Luke. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. Let me get to it. And cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest not, I'm sorry, that would send him to my father's house. I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear. And he said, Nay, Father. Nay, Father Abraham. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead. I think about that. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, that's it. There is no more opportunity for the save for the for the unsaved to get saved. All right. So if they're not believing now, they're not going to believe later. So why are you teaching this idea that unsaved people will get an opportunity to get saved? after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And that's exactly what you're teaching when you teach this idea of a thousand year reign. This idea that, that somebody, Christ or Antichrist or whoever, whoever, will bring back animal sacrifices. That's never going to happen. That's never going to happen. Jesus is going to come as a thief in the night. All right, and an hour which knows no man. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. In the days of Noah, before the flood came, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So also, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's going to come at a moment just like now. Are you expecting the Lord Jesus to come right now? Well, he's going to come at a moment just like right now.